Hey everyone, so we're at Computex 2023, and right now we're at MSI Suite looking at a host of new motherboards, cases, and coolers. And the board is what got our interest immediately. So this has all of the cabling moved to the backside of the motherboard, which is a form factor that's been attempted before, but not successfully yet, because the biggest problem is case compatibility. After this, we're gonna be looking at a new set of cases from MSI. They're all based on the same tooling, but there's a couple different alternatives between performance and RGB. Yeah, we've looked at MSI cases in the past. It's taken them a few years to get through design revisions, but it looks like the company is finally making some progress in getting cases that are more up to our quality standards for design. So that's actually really exciting. We'll look at it. Hopefully they turn out well in testing. There's some things I'm not sure about, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Before that, this video is brought to you by Deepcool and the new Zero Dark series of AK620 and AK400 CPU coolers. We previously reviewed the AK620 and AK400 and found them to be among a new crop of extremely competitive coolers for the price. The new Zero Dark and Zero Dark Plus variations move out to a blackout color design with blackout FDB fans. The heat sinks otherwise have the same characteristics as those that we tested previously and found to be well performing, just with a fresh new look. Learn more at the link in the description below. Starting with the motherboard. This is an AMD board. They're talking about potentially doing an Intel one in the future. But for now, this is what we've got. It's a B650M board, and the name is Project Zero at the moment. Currently, this is not a standard. Having the cabling on the backside hasn't been unified by all the board vendors. And so the issue we run into is obviously one of case compatibility, but also one of board vendors potentially deciding to do slightly different things. With MSIs, differing from Gigabyte and Asus in the past, uh, MSI is moving towards all of the cabling, everything on the back. That includes fan connectors, power connectors, RGB, SATA, and everything else. EPS 12 volt and uh, the 24 pin are all backside. SATA backside, USB 2, USB 3. For the board, currently, the pricing is supposed to be similar to existing board layouts. So from what MSI has told us, this uh, movement of the cabling to the backside doesn't influence the price positioning of the motherboard in any meaningful way. So the biggest challenge when we were talking MSI doesn't come from anything to do with design, it's entirely to do with the case compatibility, where uh, design-wise, because these power connectors are very mature at this point, you don't run into issues that you ran into previously with, say, DDR5 or PCIe Gen 5 signaling, because that's still all on the front, still in the normal location, it's just the power on the back and 12 volt is easy to deal with. They already, it's a known quantity and they know how to handle it. Uh, so that handles most of the board and the number one thing is going to be market adoption. Whether or not people actually buy this is what dictates if it will live or die as a standard. Without a lot of cases out there, not a lot of options and emphasize new cases actually don't support this standard. So uh, it's, it's basically gonna come down to post comments if you're even interested in this design because otherwise there's no future for it. But the only reason this exists is for cable management to get all the cabling to the backside of the chassis and that's it. There's no technical advantage, there's no uh, design advantage, it's all just cabling and making it look a little bit nicer. Let's move on to some of the new cases that MSI has. So now we're moving over to look at the cases. These are in the Gungnir line. This is a line that MSI has had a little troubled history with us in the past. They've done some major revisions. Uh, we'll review it through our standard review suite and see what we think of it. So these are the 300R Airflow, 300P, and then there's RGB variants as well. The case primarily uses the same set of tooling between the different models that we're talking about, but what changes is actually the fan layout. So we have a ton of footage of this thing moving. This is just the uh, support bracket for GPUs, it's got LEDs on it. We'll talk about that in a moment, but this behind it is what we're more interested in. That's an 80 mil fan. This has actually been done before. Cooler Master used to do a lot of this on the half series of cases, and it kind of died as a trend, but MSI's bringing it back and the only reason I think that this is maybe viable and we'll have to test it is actually because of the new flow through approach to GPU coolers where now if you have a cooler uh, card that's vertically mounted like here where they've got the PCIe uh, daughter board running to a riser to the motherboard because the card ends up seated there any flow through design will push air straight to the motherboard wall and in theory getting a little bit of extra airflow from an 80 mil at the front of the case should help guide some of the uh, air coming out of the back of the card out the back of the case which is assisted by these two fans back here as well so they've got uh, the 80 up front they have two fans in the back and the entire purpose of this is to try and get air out from behind the GPU and out of the chassis. As for more 
normal fans. Each of the cases is going to come with four 120s. So for some of the models like this one, they're just black fans. Some are RGB, but all of them are four 120s. Uh, and then the performance version of the case is the one that comes with the 80 up front and the two, I think those are 60s at the back. So that's the main difference. Otherwise you supply your own if you wanted to use it. The features are still technically there. It's just they're not uh, pre-populated. Now, as for what I think of this, well, it depends a little bit. They have some good spacing from the front of the card. So actually, if we rotate it like this, and you look back here, it's about 40 to 45 millimeters distance from the glass to the card. That's a good thing, because we found that uh, obviously as the card gets closer to the glass, you end up with thermal issues. So building in that distance and designing around it is critical to actually be able to make it thermally viable. So they've tried to accommodate that. There's also about an 80 mil gap at the top to accommodate fatter radiators and fans, which are becoming more in vogue now, especially at Computex this year, where everyone's moving to larger fans uh, or potentially push-pull configs. Front is also about 80 mil of space for the same reason. And uh, MSI is trying to go for a more thermally thoughtful design, including an ultra-fine mesh up the front, similar to what you might see on like a Fantex case, for example, where you eliminate the need for a dust filter by moving to a super fine mesh, uh, which is a much better solution than, say, doing a dust filter double stack with the mesh, because then you end up with the holes aligning with the filter, blocking the air. So uh, as for if there's any good, I don't know. We'll see. But pricing, so it's going to be $170, the Gungnir 300R Airflow. They're going to do $180 for the white version of the 300R. No other changes, just white instead. So it's a $10 jump for that. $170 for the 300P Airflow. That's the one that includes the 80 mil front, the 260s in the back, and then it's got the four 120s, and they can fit up to 12 fans in it. But realistically, uh, populating all those slots does not actually help. So that recaps most of this. A um, couple other changes. There's one more thing I want to talk about that was really interesting, which is this plate we have footage of. This can socket out and flip really easily, so you can switch it back to a more traditional horizontally mounted video card as opposed to the vertical mount they've got currently, and uh, the system is completely toolless. So we like that. And then finally, they have a toolless system for the drive cage relocation as well. You see, you just push it around like that, lock it into place. So it's good. MSI is trying to actually through some of these designs now, and um, that plus the uh, easy to use GPU support, I think is at least indicative of better mechanical design than we've seen in the past from OSI, and then we'll be reviewing it in the lab in the future. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching as always. You can subscribe for more, check back for our Computex coverage, and we'll see you all next time.